Yeah, Nebraska, before the season started, I had Nebraska favored in this game. And then a week ago, we talked this earlier in the week on the new BCS podcast. Look, I line was five. And now you're up or two touchdowns and still double digits. I think that's way too high. You should get a spirited effort here from Nebraska at home after an embarrassing loss. And by the way, obviously I have a downgrade in Nebraska, but Oklahoma we talked about this earlier in the week. They were, they were up three, nothing towards the end of the first half against Kent state. UTEP wasn't overly impressive that that win. So like they've been better than Nebraska per, compared to expectations. But again, this is what we expected from Nebraska under Scott Frost. They just flop as favorites and they thrived in this role as an underdog. So I like Nebraska here. The, the biggest question is their defense has been abysmal. They can't tackle anybody. And it's just, I mean, they can't stop a nosebleed. The hope is, you know, under a new coach, so what, some, one of the things that really improves when, like, if morale is down and when you're in a big spot is defense, which is a lot of effort. So I would imagine you get a good, the best effort of the season here from Nebraska's defense um, in, a, in a good home spot taking on an Oklahoma team that they took down to the wire as uh, last year in Norman. So, yeah, give me corn here. I think this line is overinflated, and uh, I don't care. Even if I, in the post-frost, I go ahead and lose. Actually, no, let's win a one-possession game here for the win total. Keep that on life support. Yeah. Agree here. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I agree, but I'm going to take a different angle at this number. I mean, the look-ahead line on this was Nebraska plus seven. My power ratings make it six and a half. So here we are. It's just all about, you know, the firing with Frost. Everything's a mess. I got news. Mickey Joseph has been in this situation before. He was the assistant head coach at LSU during 2020 and 2021. He's been through some changes like this where they've cleaned house and then he stuck around to coach it out. So at least he has experience in this scenario. Um, I think the interesting part about the defense is Eric Shenander has been moved back to coach the safeties. Uh, the safety coach is moving out to corners. So a little bit of shuffling going on back there. And I'm interested to know if they're still, if Nebraska is still going to be uber aggressive with blitz, which leaves them open for explosive plays. Uh, what did Scott Frost bring to this team that dictates this spread should be so big? Did he make halftime adjustments? No. Did he help with special teams? No. Did he improve the defense, which is what why they took play calling away from? Him? No. But there were disagreements with Mark Whipple. Like there, I mean, you look at the conversations. There was just not Mark Whipple. I think his comments this week were, uh, I just you know I, I hear my I hear we have conversations and I just roll with it. I, I don't really kind of you know cause any trouble. I do my job and I go home. There's no limitations on Mark Whipple now. And what does that mean? That means an offense that's running at about 21 seconds per play is going to be able to do whatever he wants with Casey Thompson and not have any issues. So I think we're going to see an extremely fast game because Oklahoma's already running at 22 seconds per play. Uh, and, and so I think the over is absolutely worth consideration here. Now, the thing that leads into the bet that I'm going to make on this um, is Oklahoma has just disappeared from the first half against UTEP. That they disappeared against uh, Kent State from the first half completely. I, you know, they were in the second quarter against UTEP. They only scored a touchdown. They were just absent that entire time, and I'm not really sure where they were. There are still struggles on this defense. Uh, you know, they're still getting burned for some explosive plays. I think Venables is still working to get this team uh, to get in the mold of what he wants. They're 79th in tackling right now. I think there's going to be a very fired up Nebraska team coming out of there. This is a huge game. And Mickey Joseph, I think, is the perfect voice that needs to be in that locker room right now. So, Stuck, I agree with you. I think Corn getting the 11 is good, even though it's come down from 15. I'll play it with you. I like the over here. But the bet I want to make on this game that I am going to make on the game is Nebraska first half money line. I absolutely think they're going to have positive energy coming out of there. And the fact that Oklahoma keeps falling asleep in the first half against the Kent States and the UTEPs of the world, Nebraska is going to be able to catch them here. Yeah, this is narrative based, but just, I mean, Frost will make bad decisions. Like it's hard to determine how much he's worth quantitatively, like negative wise to the spread. But so it's just a subjective input for me, but he would make poor decisions and just the morale. Like I would watch him try to like dap up players, watch and like they just didn't, there was just no buy in there. So that could only improve, especially for the first game. 